and he's still a dangerous man, so I didn't overlook him. Uh, I still carried him as a threat, and I listened to follow instructions for my corner, and we executed. Now, um, we had uh, Kobe a soldier briefly there, and one of his themes is he's basically ready for anything. Now, coming off that last question, uh, he was saying that, you know, your opponent was overweight, but you still basically had to come in there like he was basically in shape and basically ready to go. So how did you just basically, you know, uh, take that and just go right at your opponent? Uh, that's just something, as a fighter, we got we to gotta be very foundated mentally, you know, and honestly, I thought I got to charge it to the game. Things happen. It's not the first time that people came in overweight. I done seen champions, ex-champions, get stripped from their title for coming in overweight. But that's their problem, not mine. I got to come well prepared and have me, have all of my tools that I need in order to get the job done come fight time. Word. Now, what is the imp inspiration of your uh, outfit that you came out to the ring with here? My inspiration? I, I just want to be able to grab the crowd because... Me and my family, we give a lot of subliminal messages, and a lot of times we give direct messages based upon what's going on in the world, you know, based upon history and et cetera, you know, and it's two ways to give, you know, a, a certain level of intellectual message. And one is inspiration. That's one. And at first, there's a second one. You got to seriously give information. So the inspiration part is me showcasing my talent, being able to grasp their attention. Mm -hmm. And the second stage is to seriously give information. And that's how not just me, but me and my family carry ourselves. Gotcha. Considering the uh, class that you came out with, you know, the Telfimo Lopez, Shakur Stevenson, you know, those guys, do you feel right. like you get the respect, um, you know, as, as far as the prospect is concerned? Uh, to each his own. I, I don't think I can speak for them. You know, we we very familiar with one another. Like you said, we came up on the qualifiers and et cetera. We was on the Olympic team together and et cetera. You know, so we have a somewhat of a close bondage. You know, but I hope they was looking. I hope they were supporting. Do you have your eye on anyone else? Um, you know, my queen, that's, that's not for me to answer. Uh, like I said, my, my coach slash father, he's the one that lines the opponents up and tell me, hey, go fetch. <laughs> so that's, that's just how that goes. Oh, I'm sure the alpha who you're talking about is, is definitely going to have you uh, right back at it, being that you have been doing back to back to back with the Deontay Wilder on the card. It's, it's been right busy for you, some exciting. What positives and what can you take out of such a, a quick uh, stop as being that you're still learning about yourself as you grow? Um, I mean, I, I believe in flawless victories. You know, it's, it's times people look good, but it's always a time when they come out the ring saying, oh, I could have, or I should have, you know, and I'm just trying to gauge myself based off of that. You know, I feel like I came out victorious, you know, and somewhat flawless, but it was still more that could have been done, you know what I mean? So I want to come out in the, in the, at the end of the fight saying, I done did it all, I done hit him with everything, plus the kitchen sink and made it look good.